Hello everybody, we are here today to talk about innovation and system logic. I am Jacopo Filippo Bargellini, I am a strategic consultant in business and innovation and I am a marketing professor. So the first question that uh, arises for sure is uh, what is innovation? And uh, the answer is not easy, but we can start saying what is not. So let's say that innovation is not just creativity. That is, today there is this trend which is very good, that the company wants everybody to be innovative and they want to be innovative themselves, but uh, the creativity is the base of innovation and is not the innovation. So creativity is important, but it's not enough. So we can keep on in saying what is not, uh, and innovation is not just invention, that is, you must be creative to make the invention, but still we are in the phase where you have something which is not yet on the market and not yet successful. So we can say innovation is not just invention. And then we can keep on in our reflection what uh, innovation is not. Uh, innovation is not necessarily just a product. Because when we talk about innovation, a lot of people think about a product, an innovative product. So here we have a camera, which is a very innovative one, and this is an innovation on the market. But when we talk about innovation, it's not necessarily just a product. And then we can keep on in our reflections and say now, what is innovation? So innovation is when an idea is successfully transformed into a product or a service or an application or a solution which is viable for a certain market, not necessarily for all the market. And the market can be even the one inside the company. That is that sometimes the innovation is inside the company. You can have a process innovation and this is suitable inside the company. So innovation is not just something that goes outside of the company. And keeping on with our reflection, we can say that innovation is when, according to this graphic, you have an idea, as you see here, and there are speculation about the possible development of this idea, and we are in the phase where the idea is not working. So through a path, uh, here you see a straight path, uh, and then you see the much more likely one, which is much more complicated. So through a path, we are going from an idea which is not working and is not interesting for the market to the real thing. So something that is really working, but still is not an innovation, but that is working and that is interesting for the market. So only when an idea is working and is interesting for the market can be a success and it is an innovation. Another definition that is an easier one, a more pragmatic one, is innovation is when you start making money. What does it mean? Well, there is difference between the stages. That is that from an idea to invention, you need the money. That is that when you have an idea and you want to make an invention, you have to finance this idea because you have to finance the development till an invention and you spend money. But when you reach the innovation, so the idea works on a specific market, well, this becomes the moment when the innovation is a money maker. So basically the innovation can be defined like something is the moment when you get the money and is no more the moment that you have to put the money into the process. Well, putting together several definitions of innovation, I uh, arrived to my personal definition of innovation, that is turning an idea into a solution, as you see it's not just a product, which is viable and valuable for the company, so this must have a value for the company, and can give added value to the customer. For sure, the customer is the most important element, so if the innovation is not giving added value to the customer, it's not the worth. Then allows to earn money, well, the company is there to earn money, Reposition the brand. This is very important. You know, no, don't normally hear about this. That is that 
when you make something new, you should have a repositioning of the brand. This should increase the value of your brand and possibly contributes to improve the whole system because every company is immersed in a system and what you do should be valuable for all the system. So possibly contributes to improve the whole system in which the company live. When we talk about innovation, we know that there are obstacles. So normally people think innovation is a product. So the obstacle is about uh, the money. Maybe we don't have enough money. The problem is about the technological availability. That is that uh, we don't have enough technology. We didn't develop the suitable technology. Or we lack of specialized people. Actually not. The main problem are different and regards not just a product innovation but every kind of innovation. So in a general way we can say that the real obstacle to innovation are the fear of the people because the people fear the new, the tradition. Normally the people has a certain kind of tradition. And then habits, it's comfortable to have some habits and then preferences and then lobbies, so a group of companies pushing away the innovation because it's not good for their business. And at the end, a statement like, it has been always done this way, so why do have we to make the innovation? So here there is a very interesting image because you have all the candles around a bulb which is going to be hanged and you understand why, and this is a case of a lobby. It's not of interest of the candles that the bulb take over their market. So this is a very interesting uh, vision of what are the obstacles of innovation. Actually, the innovation is already there. The invention is available to go on the market, but there is a lobby who push the innovation away. And this can be both on the side of the company that has fear, tradition and habits, but also on the side of the customer. So we can state this, uh, seeing this kind of image that is that a lot of time people who should or would or could accept innovation like the customer, well, they have some like blinkers. So they don't look outside and they just look forward and they don't accept what comes from another direction. So this is, as I said, also the fault of the customer, not just the companies. And sometimes, uh, I wouldn't say a lot of time, but happens something which is quite uh, weird. So here is another image which is very interesting and very representative. That is that you have this person, we are here in the prehistoric age, and you have this person that invented the wheel. And then he is giving the wheel to these two people that has a chariot with a wheel which is actually a square wheel. And so with this kind of rounded wheel, the business would be much better. But the people says, no thanks, we are too busy. So here arises another problem. Looking at this image, you would say, well, he's a clever one and they are not clever because they are not following this suggestion. But maybe the fault is not just because they don't believe this is interesting for them. Maybe the fault is also because this person didn't explain to them what are the advantages of the wheel. So we can imagine that if he was building a chariot like this, but with the rounded wheels and surpassing these two people, they could watch the effect of the rounded wheel and understand immediately what is the value of this innovation. So I would say for certain that sometimes the innovation is there, the market is there, but the company is not able to convince the people or to show to the people what are the advantages. And so the people refuse the innovation, saying something like, no thanks, we are too busy. Actually, not necessarily talking about strictly innovation, but talking about a new strategy. I had the same experience and 
I won't briefly talk about what happened to me about beginning of 2000. So, to make a long story short, uh, in the, the 90s, during the 90s, there was this brand called Mivar, and uh, this is the owner of uh, Mivar. And Mivar was a company making television, CRT television, and this was a very successful brand during the 90s in Italy. And they were able, and he was able, to create a different kind of design with a very valuable technology and with a very valuable product. So I would say the marketing mix was perfect and everybody was buying a Miver. I remember the beginning of 2000 to go to the headquarters of Miver and uh, meeting his uh, uh, manager, his general manager and also owner. And uh, I proposed to him uh, uh, innovation and brand strategy given that the brand was still strong but we could do something else and he was very polite he listened to me and then at the end he said what you're telling to me is very interesting but as you see here he said I don't have time for strategies I have to work so this is sometimes similar somehow similar as like the person who invented the wheel I didn't invent a wheel but actually I had a proposal and he didn't say the proposal is not interesting he said to me that the proposal was not the one who he could follow because he didn't have time for strategies he had to work and so this is something that I will always remember so when it comes to innovation you have another reflection that you have to do never improve what already works before you improve what does not that is that when it comes to innovation well there is a lot of people a lot of companies saying ah oh, we are making a great innovation here but they're not taking in account that maybe this innovation here is not suitable because the company lives in the system and if there's another point in the system which is a weaker one this innovation will not work so we can see this uh, with this simple image we have a bottleneck here which means a point where there is a restricted flow so this works very well for a bottle if you have a bottle of wine you don't have a big neck you have a small neck because you don't want a lot of wine to come into your glass so when it comes to a process when it comes to a system when it comes to an innovation well if you want a flow to be a bigger one well you have to widen here not to widen here well we are close to New Year's Eve just a few days ago I mean 15 days ago so the point is well probably you had a bottle of champagne in your hand and you have a certain size of a bottle that is a bottleneck but even if you had a magnum of champagne the body of the bottle was very big so there was more liter in the bottle but the bottleneck is still the same so if you want to pour more champagne in the same time you don't have to have a bigger bottle you must have a bigger neck so you have to go into the bottleneck and widen the bottleneck and how can we see this uh, in an innovation? Well, here is a picture which makes me laugh all the time that I see it. This is a picture I took in the parking of my supermarket. This is not my scooter, but I was there with the scooter and then I noticed this. Look, this guy used a lock to avoid that the scooter is stolen but he put the lock on the pole and the pole is not closed or not tall enough so it's enough that you lift the wheel up and you can easily steal the scooter so if we consider this as the system and you have a bottleneck well the bottleneck is here so the point is in order not to make the scooter be stolen you don't have to increase the size of this lock but you have to use a longer pole or a closed pole because in this way this is completely useless so this is where i want to go when i say you have to widen the bottleneck before and then i have another image which is even more 
uh, cl clear about what is this uh, concept. That is, this is a chain, and a general statement says no chain is stronger than its weaker ring. So you can imagine that if this chain is going to ever break, for sure it's going to break here. So every time you have a chain, so several elements, and this happens every time in the system, well, you have to take care not of the chain which works, not at first, but at first to identify the ring which is the weaker one. So I have here another image which show you a system. So always take care of the system you belong to. That is that when you are in the system and you are here, well, you have other element in the system and links. So don't think to be successful just because you make innovation here. Because if you don't take in account all the system, it's going to be very difficult. So someone could have uh, some difficulties in understanding what I want to say just seeing this. Uh, and I have a very clear example. So here we have a Ferrari Portofino, which is a beautiful car. High technology, perfection. We actually don't need to improve this, although you can have another model. But in itself, this is a great car. So I am Ferrari. And I think, well, this is a great car. So we are going to make a hit when we sell this in Venice. You see the problem? The problem is not that this is not innovative enough. The problem is that in Venice they don't have any road, so you cannot sell any Ferrari. So this is a very important point. It would be very useless if Ferrari put more innovation on the product itself uh, without taking care of the fact that in Venice they don't have any road. Then for sure we have to question if it's really <laughs> the case to make the road in Venice, which is not. So we cannot solve this problem. But in a general way, a good approach is, okay, we have a good product, we don't improve the product, we have to check what are the main weak elements of our system. In a general way, this is what normally happens when you, for instance, manage a metro line. So when you have a metro line, you have different line that crosses, then you have different station, I would say a lot of station, and then you have platforms in the station, and then in the lines you have rails and trains. So you would think, okay, what you're telling us, it's obvious. Everybody knows that we have to manage the things in this way. But if there is no one manager making supervision, errors can occur, and big errors. This is me in Gare de l'Est in Paris, waiting for my train to go from Paris to Troyes. And what's the problem? I waited five years to have this new train, but the train was ready five years before. So what's the point? The point, as you see in this article, new French trains too wide for the station. So this is a big error, you imagine. The company made bigger train and they cannot get into the station. So you could think it's the fault of the producer of the train. Actually, it's not the fault of the producer. The point is that in France, they have different managers for the rails, for the station, for the trains, and there's another company which makes the trains. There was no coordination, and at the end, they had trains which were bigger, they couldn't get into the station because they were too wide, and they lost 50 million euro and five years. So you understand big errors can occur when you're not able to manage the system. There is another thing which is very interesting about innovation. Often the real innovation is in the less visible part of the system. That is that you see things and you, see, you say, well, this is the innovative part. But actually the innovation is hidden and you don't know about. And again, I have a, a very interesting example. This is a movie of the 80s, which is uh, Lethal Weapon. 
and uh, there is Danny Glover and Mel Gibson. And you see that uh, Danny Glover has uh, a small bag in his hand. You wouldn't believe, but this is a mobile phone. So how a mobile phone could be so big and how we can today have a mobile phone so small? So let's say that this is 1987 and in 1989, uh, 1989 we had the first mobile phone which had this kind of shape. Okay, so starting from that moment we had an increase in innovation and in the future, in the near future, we can also have something like this. So everybody has a phone, everybody sees the phones of the other people and everybody thinks, well, the phone itself is innovative. But actually, the answer is, yes, it's innovative, but it's not the main point. The main point why tomorrow we can do this uh, lies not just in the innovation related to the handset, but mainly lies in the net, in the fact that because today we have a lot of antenna, you require less power, and the cellular phone, which is basically a radio, doesn't have to be so powerful, and so you don't need a big battery, because the antenna is very close, while at the time of the movie, the antenna were far away, so you needed a lot of power and a lot of battery. And then the other part of innovation comes from the carriers. So you know that you can have the best phone ever, but if you don't have a provider, if you don't have a carrier, if you don't have a service on the phone, the phone is totally useless. And I would go further. You have a wonderful phone, there's a lot of antennas, and there's a lot of carriers that gives you a lot of services. If you don't have the electricity, the mobile phone after uh, several hours is completely useless and we know this. So when you have a product living in a system, you have to check the system because the innovation maybe is more related to the system than in the product itself. A very good statement after this uh, is that a company with the system under control can rule the market. So I want you to reflect on the fact that yes, this is true that Tesla is making electric cars, but is the only electric cars maker? Actually, no, there's a lot of companies making electric cars, but Tesla is taking care of the production of the batteries, which comes before the car, and of the recharger, which comes after the car. So this is having the control of the system. So in Italy, we are late in having the adoption of electric cars, not because we don't have electric cars, but we don't have a network of recharger. So again, if you control the system, you control the market. And then Tesla dealing with electricity, they want also to go into the house so they can sell the electricity somewhere else. But actually, at the beginning, the electricity was from the house. It's from a recent time that is into the car. So you see, I like very much Elon Musk and his innovation approach in all his companies because he's not just focusing on one element, but he's focusing on having an innovative system. At least you can have a competitive advantage. That is, if you control the system, you can have uh, rule the market or you can have a certain competitive advantage. So here is another example from uh, Loro Piana. Loro Piana is a totally different company. It's a luxury company and they deal with clothes in wool, several kinds of wool. And one of their main wool is the uh, Vicogna. And the, in Italy, the Vicogna, or Vicogna if you want. So the Vicogna is a small camelid which uh, lives in Argentina and they bought a breed of Vicogna. So it's a big farm, that the, the, I would say, because the Vicuña is living uh, more or less in a savage uh, uh, area, and they can have all the production of the Vicuña for themselves. So they control the supply, and as not, they are not just the only one, but as a lot of company, they also control the distribution. So they can have a competitive advantage because they control the supply chain. 
Then there is another reflection, that is, uh, when uh, uh, you introduce an innovation, uh, you always have to think about what is the priority matrix. So the priority matrix uh, is uh, a simple chessboard with nine square, where you see you have numbers from one to five, and it's one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five. And the most important thing here is the color. So you have the green color, which is the best, and the black color, which is the worst. But how it works? Here on the horizontal, you have the effort. So this is the amount of effort that you put into creation a new innovation. And then here on the vertical, you have the impact. So how much effort for this innovation and how much impact on the market? So you understand easily that the best is that you have and you put a low effort and then you have a high impact on the market and it's not at all suitable that you make a big effort, a high effort and you have a low impact on the market. So the best one is number one, green, the worst in, in number five. So every time you make and create an innovation, the point is not to focus just on innovation itself, but to think with all the energies, the money, and the time that we put in this innovation, is this innovation really interesting? Is going to have a huge impact on the market? And this reflection makes me think about this idea that I've seen on the market, actually, on not already on the market. And this is exactly the point. For me, this innovation is not, this invention is not going into the market. You know what the problem is here? First of all, I tell you what it is. This is a safe plane proposal from an uh, aeronautical engineer from Ukraine. And the idea is a very good one. This is made to save the life of the passenger. So the basic idea is, if there's something wrong with the plane, the plane is going to crash. But before the plane is going to crash, the cabin detached from the main frame and through two parachute, it can land safely all the people alive. So, seeing like this, there's a lot of people saying, oh, this is great, we should apply this. First of all, there is a technical problem. As for your experience, every plane, plane for an airline that we fly on, has a lower wing, not a high wing. So you understand the first one would be completely change the production of all the planes in the world in order to make this suitable. But then there is an even worse problem, which is actually there are accidents for planes. But this seems to be a good idea, but statistics says that most of the accidents happen, you see here, during the takeoff phase and the landing phase. Hence, uh, this system, which would be maybe useful during the cruise, uh, is not useful because during the cruise we almost don't have accident. Most of them are here and you understand if the plane is too low, there is no time for the parachutes to open. And then there is another problem. When you have a detachable cabin, you are somehow adding some failure point. So at the end, uh, this invention, which would be to be an innovation, is probably increasing the number of accidents. So it's not suitable at all. So at the end, I would like to close this uh, presentation saying that innovation is useless when it's not usable. So usability is king when it comes to innovation. And I have a final slide which is a very I would say funny one, and uh, this is a slide uh, that is about a patent. Uh, we are in the United States in the 60s, and uh, in the United States the people are afraid uh, that Russians are going to bomb the United States with a nuclear bomb. So here there is a patent of a guy who invented a bag inside which there is a shield, which is a telescopic one. So the basic idea is the people all the day long, every day of their life, they will go outside with the bag which is 30 kilo weight and if ever 
there is a bomb, a nuclear bomb from the Russia exploding close to them and then they have the time to see the blast. Well, they see the blast, they open the bag, they take out the shield and they put the shield on the shoulder and they go and find a wall in order to protect themselves. So you understand that the like, uh, likely of the, the possibility of uh, these events is very, 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 very low, while the fact that you every day you have to have this heavy bag with you, it's something that you have in your life all the day. So you're wasting your life, and then if ever you have the time to see the blast and to put on yourself this shield, when you take away the shield, you will probably be the only man alive. So it's not really the worth. Okay, thank you very much. I hope this was useful for you. Bye-bye and thank you very much.